Let's look at small angle approximations. So the key notes are that cos x can be approximated as 1 minus x squared over 2, sin x can be approximated as x, and tan x can be approximated as x when x is small, so i.e. close to 0, and when measured in radians. And the reason why these approximations work really well are because we can see the graphs of cos, sine, and tan, and how 1 minus x squared over 2 is really close to cos x for really small values of x. So for instance, these values here, in this region, you can see the graphs match up. Likewise for sine x, for small values of x, so say within this region, we can see that the graph for sine x matches really well with the graph for y equals x. And then likewise, for small values of x for tan x, we can see that the graph of tan x matches really well with y equals x and gives a really good approximation. So the examples say, when theta is small, find the approximate values of the following in radians. The first example is cos theta minus 1 over theta times tan 2 theta. So since we're looking at small values of theta, our angle, and since we're also working in radians, we can now use approximations for cos and tan. And so this expression can be approximated as the following. Cos theta can be replaced with 1 minus theta squared over 2. So we can write that in. And then we have minus 1 in the numerator as well. And then in the denominator, we now have theta multiplied by tan 2 theta. And so in this case, if tan x is approximated as x, then 2 theta would be approximated as 2 theta. And now simplifying this expression, we get the following. So in the numerator, 1 minus 1 cancels. And then we have minus theta squared over 2. In the denominator, we have theta times 2 theta, which gives us 2 theta squared. And now simplifying this, we get the following. If we times the numerator and denominator by 2, then we end up with minus theta squared over 2 times 2, which is minus theta squared. And the denominator is 2 theta squared times 2, which is 4 theta squared. And so theta squared and theta squared cancels, and so we're just left with minus 1 over 4. And that is the approximate value of this expression. Looking at the second example, we have 4 cos 3 theta minus 2 plus 5 sine theta all over 1 minus sine 2 theta. So again, we can use small angle approximations since theta is small and measured in radians. And so we can now write this as 4 times, now cos 3 theta can be approximated using the following. So we have cos x is approximated as 1 minus x squared over 2. And so cos 3 theta is now going to be approximated as 1 minus, and now where we have the x, we're going to replace that with 3 theta. And then we're going to square all of this, since we have x squared here. And this is going to be divided by 2. And then we have minus 2 in the numerator, and we also have 5. Now sine theta can be approximated as theta, so we can write that in. And then we have all over 1 minus, and now sine 2 theta can be approximated as 2 theta. If we simplify this, we get the following. So we have 4, and then inside the brackets, we now have 1 minus. So 3 theta all squared is 9 theta squared all over 2. And then we have minus 2, and then we have plus 5 theta. And then this is all over 1 minus 2 theta. Expanding the brackets out in the numerator, we get the following. So 4 times 1 is equal to 4. 4 times minus 9 theta squared over 2 is going to give us 18 theta squared. And then we have the negative as well. So minus 18 theta squared. And then we have minus 2. And then we also have 5 theta. And then in the denominator, we have 1 minus 2 theta. And now this can be written in the following way. The 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. We then have minus 18 theta squared. We also have plus 5 theta. And then we have all over 1 minus 2 theta. Now rewriting this, we end up with minus 18 theta squared plus 5 theta plus 2 all over 1 minus 2 theta. And so the numerator is a quadratic in disguise, which we can factorize. And so we're looking for two numbers that times to make minus 18 times 2, which is minus 36, and two numbers that add to make 5. In this case, those two numbers are 9 and minus 4. And so focusing on the quadratic in the numerator, we can now write this as minus 18 theta squared plus 9 theta minus 4 theta plus 2. And now if we factorize this further, we end up with the following. Now factorizing this, we can see that the highest common factor in the first two terms is 9 theta. And so factorizing that out, we then have inside the bracket minus 2 theta plus 1. 
And then for the last two terms, the highest common factor is plus two. And so factorizing this out, we're now left with inside the brackets, minus two theta plus one. If we factorize this further, we can see that the brackets are common in both expressions. And so factorizing this, we end up with minus two theta plus one. And then inside the brackets, we now have nine theta plus two. And minus two theta plus one is the same as one minus two theta. And then the second bracket stays the same. And so replacing the numerator with the factorized form, we now end up with this fraction equaling to one minus two theta in brackets multiplied with nine theta plus two in brackets and then we have one minus two theta in the denominator. So the one minus two thetas cancel nicely and so we're left with nine theta plus two. And now since we're trying to find the approximate value of nine theta plus two, we know that theta is small so in essence it's really close to zero and so effectively this becomes that the approximate value of this is equal to nine times zero, which is zero, plus two, which is equal to two, when theta is small and measured in radians. For the last example, we have four cos squared theta minus sine to the power of four theta. So again, since we're looking at theta being small and measured in radians, we can use small angle approximations. And so this can be approximated as four times, now cos theta is approximated as one minus theta squared over two. So we can write that in as one minus theta squared over two. And now because we have cos squared theta, we're going to square the bracket. And then likewise for sine theta, we can now write this as minus. And now sine theta is approximated as theta. And because we have sine to the power of four theta, we can now write this as theta to the power of four. And so we can now write this as four times. And now if we expand the squared bracket, we have one minus theta squared over two times one minus theta squared over two. And if you expand this out, we get one times one, which is one, one times minus theta squared over two, which is minus theta squared over two. We get minus theta squared over two times one, which is minus theta squared over two again. And then we have minus theta squared over two times minus theta squared over two, which is equal to plus theta to the power of four over two times two, which is four. And so this simplifies to one minus and now the middle two terms become minus theta squared. We have plus theta to the power of four over four. We can now replace the squared bracket with these three terms. And so we end up with one minus theta squared plus theta to the power of four over four. And then we have minus theta to the power of four. And now expanding the brackets out, we get the following. Four times one is equal to four. Four times minus theta squared is equal to minus four theta squared. We then have four times theta to the power of four over four, which is theta to the power of four. And then we have minus theta to the power of four on the outside. And now collecting like terms, we get that four stays the same, minus four theta squared stays the same. And now theta to the power of four minus theta to the power of four cancel out. So since we're looking at small angle approximations, then we can approximate this in the following way. So four stays the same, and now theta being small means that it's effectively close to zero. And so a really tiny number squared is still really small, times four is essentially equal to zero. And so four minus four theta squared approximates to four.